morning again and welcome to Word of Faith Responds. We're so glad you're with us this morning. We have really enjoyed sharing with you what Jesus has done in our lives. I'm Mark Morris and I'm with the Word of Faith Fellowship and today I have Allison Curis with me. She is a member of the Word of Faith Fellowship as well. She wants to share with you the powerful things that God has done in her life. She actually came to our church in 1993 from Oakland, California. Uh, it's amazing how God has brought people from all over the place to uh, here, right here in Spindale. Uh, in, in our church, it's always been amazing how God brought people from all over the planet to, to our church. So uh, we're just grateful that God has a plan for our lives and he knows exactly where we need to be and who we need to be with. And Allison, is, Allison has been such a blessing in our church. And of course, she's married to Andy Karras, who also shared on this program with his brother, Billy. Uh, if you want to hear some of our past radio programs. We actually video them. They're all on our website. Our website is wordoffaithfellowship.org and you can go there and see all of these uh, wonderful testimonies about what Jesus has done in our lives. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Allison. Go okay, ahead, Allison. Thanks, Mark, and thank you everybody that's listening. Um, it's really an honor to be here. I never would have thought 25 years ago that I would be on a radio program sharing what God has done in my life, but it's really been a miracle. Um, like Mark said, I'm, I was born in Oakland, California. I was really raised in Walnut Creek, California, which is in the East Bay of San Francisco. I'm the youngest of three children. Um, my parents, growing up, um, it was a pretty difficult childhood. Uh, my parents were both very, um, they did not have a good foundation in their, in their childhood. My dad, um, when he was eight years old, his mother died of a sudden heart attack, and so he was put in an orphanage Methodist children's home and so he had a lot of hurts and wounds growing up and he never really was able to get free from that he joined the Navy at a very young age he he was always I just remember he was always very depressed very um, sad he always just had just a sadness on him he was very shut down emotionally I mean I can remember growing up as a child us sitting around at the dinner table and trying to make him laugh just trying to get some emotion out of him make him smile so it was kind of a very oppressive environment to grow up in. My mom came, um, she had a Christian upbringing, but she became very rebellious in her, her you know, young adult age. Um, she also had a lot of depression, um, you know, at her. And I can just remember them, you know, growing up, they fought a lot, you know, because they didn't have a good foundation in their life. They fought a lot. They're usually about money, about things like that. Um, I can remember one night in particular, she, she would get so frustrated with him because he was so shut down that she would push and push until he would finally just explode, you know, and he would curse and he would call her names. And I can remember one night, I think I was maybe eight or nine, just laying in my bed and, and you know, trying to go to sleep and hearing them fighting and my mom just crying and running down the hallway past my room crying and just, just you know, it just cut you as a child, just cut you to the heart, just putting my head in my pillow and just crying myself to sleep and so like I said it was just a very oppressive environment to grow up in we did not go to church growing up there were times like you know on holidays my mom would pull out the big family bible and she'd tell us stories you know about Jesus and and I always enjoyed that but God was always out there just far away so and um, when I was about nine years old and this was really a landmark in my life like I said my mom did have some Christian up bringing some fear of God in her. Um, she took me to a big uh, Christian crusade at the Oakland Coliseum, and there was tens of thousands of people there. It was full, you know, like say like at a baseball game. So um, I can just remember hearing, I don't know that I'd ever heard the gospel message before, but it was just so simple, you know, how we are, we are separated from God because of our sin, and the only way to get back to God is through Jesus and giving your, you know, repenting of your sin. And I just remember I was, I was very shy, very withdrawn, very shut down. But I remember being so convicted, you know, that if I did not, you know, make a decision, I was, you know, on my way to hell. You know, it was just so clear. So I can remember them giving the altar call and looking at my mom sitting beside me and she's just looking up at me and I'm like, aren't you coming? I mean, I was ready to go down there. I couldn't understand why she was still sitting there. Why would you want to go to hell, you know? So I went down and they prayed with me and I, I can just remember, you know, it was just a, a landmark in my life. From that time on, I can say God's hand was on my life. Um, there was a fear of God in me. There were times in my life, I know that because of that place, God, God restrained me from going, you know, deeper into sin that I could have. Um, 
anyway, when I was, things never really got better with my parents. When, when I was about 12 years old, I can remember they sat us all down one night um, and told us that they were going to get a divorce. And I can just remember, um, it just like, it was a, a devastating feeling. And my brother, my sister, and I were there. My brother and my sister started crying. But I was, by that time, I was just so numb. I just, I didn't know how to respond, you know. But, but you could feel it was like a protection had been lifted off of us. It was like a, a brokenness that came to our family after that. And, and really, really nothing ever happened after that. My dad didn't move out. Nothing was ever said. It was just very unstable. You didn't know what was going to happen. But then, you know, I think they were trying still. But then when I was about 13, my dad really finally did move out. And um, my, you know, uh, so I was 13. Um, my sister was four years older than me. Um, so she, he moved out. And then maybe about six months later, my sister moved out. About a year later, my brother moved out. So within just a short period of time, we went from a family of five. You know, we did have some happy times together. But like I said, there was just that oppression that was always there um, so then it was just me and my mom just the two of us and my mom is thinking well this is gonna be great it's just be me and Allison we'll have a, a good time together we'll get really close and that did not happen I mean because that, that devastation all that hurt in me it really opened the door for the devil to come into my life and um, I became very more withdrawn very rebellious I became very against my mother very sarcastic all the time just um, I, I had always been a good student up to that point, but um, I started not doing well in school. Um, really, I, like I said, I just became very withdrawn, even suicidal thoughts, you know. But I knew in my heart, if I did anything like that, I would go to hell because I knew I had that fear of God in my heart. I could not do that. I did not want to go to hell. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway... Um, and you remember, this is the 70s in California high school. So this is after, you know, the 60s. It was not a good environment in my high school. I mean, there was there, there was no positive influence in my life anywhere. Um, I, I can remember friends, you know, just even in junior high, doing heavy drugs and involved in bad relationships. And it was just not a good time era, you know, to be growing up in high school. So... So things were not going well for me. And then I remember in particular when I was in high school, this is after my dad had moved out, I actually, I was cutting classes a lot. And one day I was actually, for a period of time, I was out of school for eight days and my parents didn't even know it. I would watch my mom drive off in the morning and I'd go back to bed and sleep all day. It was just yeah. terrible. I was just a tormented, tormented person. And my mother was very um, disturbed about me. She did not know what to do with me. Um, but at the same time, you know, she had just been divorced. She was trying to find herself. She was dating other men. She was seeing a psychologist. She took me to a psychologist. It was just a mess. You know, there was no answers anywhere. She would periodically give me pep talks, you know, like, you've got to be strong. you got to, you know. She would never, never bring me to Jesus, but, you know, she'd always, you got to be strong in yourself. And I, I couldn't do that. I knew what kind of a person I was. I was not strong. I mean, I was tormented. So it didn't help, but, but there was no reality with her how bad it was with me, but she did not know what to do. So, you know, I, I was, like I said, I was not doing well, but, but on the other hand, there were times when I, I would try to do good, you know, and I'd try to, try to start over again, and, um, but it never worked. I'd always fall back. So when in my junior year in high school, I taught my, my mother, my father, the principal of the school to let me take um, the proficiency exam to get out of high school. So when I was 16, I took the exam, I did really well on it, and I was out of, out of high school. So now we start my adult life at 16, 17, and um, I started working. All of a sudden, I'm in an adult world. There's, you know, just a lot going on around me. Uh, parties, drinking, drugs. I worked in a restaurant, which is, you know, not always a good environment. Uh, I started working in an office when I was 19 years old. I started working for a man that was 17 years older than me. And we ended up in a relationship, and it was really not a good situation at all for me. Um, I was looking for that stability, that security, but really it was brought great destruction into my life for several years, and it really the effects of it carried on for a long time. Um, it was just a very dark time in my life. I was drinking all the time. I was really, when I was in that relationship, I was pretty much 
out of it every night, you know, and it, we ended up living together for six months. It was just a bad situation. So that lasted about two years after that. I had a great idea. I'm going to make a new start again. I moved to Southern California. Where I got that idea, I don't know, from the devil, because it was even worse. I mean, you're from Southern California, you know, I and mean, it was even more worldly, even more wild out there, you know. So I, I was still, I was going to community colleges, working. I was just searching. I was wandering. I was just drifting. I had no purpose in my life, still going to bars, still drinking, bad relationships. Um, and I just felt, you know, the conviction that I did have in my heart, I just felt so defiled inside after, you know, the, the sin that I had given to. And, um, but there were no answers. Nobody had any answers. Nobody knew how to help me. So I think I was about 23 when I really started coming to the end of myself. And um, I felt the Spirit of God start drawing me. Um, conviction started coming to my life. I literally felt like I was walking on a tightrope between heaven and hell. I started going to, you know, there's, there's a lot of big churches in Southern California where you can just kind of slide in and out and nobody sees you. Well, I liked that then because I was still living my other life, right. you know, double life, and there was no accountability. So I was getting, you know... I was seeking God, but on the other hand, I was always pulled to this lifestyle. So um, one night I can remember in particular, I, like I said, I was, I was trying to do right, but yet all these influences in my life were, were just, you know, I, I couldn't get free from it. So I remember one night I'm in my bathroom in, um, somewhere in Southern California, and I just fought, it was probably 2 o'clock in the morning, I just fell to the floor and I just started crying and crying, and I, I just said, I can't do this by myself. And I didn't, wasn't even crying out to God. I didn't even know to cry out to God. But, but yet, I woke up the next morning, and I, there was a peace on me. I didn't understand what had happened to me, but I felt a peace. And I felt the power of that, the addiction to alcohol was, was gone. And uh, it's not that I didn't drink after that, but there was, I, I always knew I was choosing to do it. It's like the power of it was broken, but, but yet, you know, the pull was still there. But something had changed in my heart. God was drawing me. And so um, this went on for probably maybe another year or so. Um, and then at one point I, I was seeing a man. Um, we were in a bar in Southern California somewhere. I don't really remember where. There was one night. Um, the music was just blaring. There was people everywhere. There were lights everywhere. It was so loud you couldn't even hear yourself think. I'm sitting with him where all this is going on around me. And I just start weeping. And I'm just weeping and weeping you know, sitting at this table, and I just can't stop crying, and he's looking at me like, you know, what's going on with you, and I, it was God, it was, he was dealing with my heart, I was like, I could feel the grieving of God for the life I had been living, you know, and God was just trying to get to my heart, and, you know, after a little while, he said, you know, do we need to leave, and I said, yeah, we, we need to leave, and that man, actually, he wanted to marry me, and after that, he said, you know, is there, you know, would you marry me, and I, I said, I, I can't, you know, because in my heart I knew my life was belonged to God. I could not, you know, go with that, the world like that, and he was part of that. So um, the, the power of God that was on my life that time was, was just irresistible. I could, it's like, the, I can't describe the, pa the drawing power of God was irresistible to me. It was so strong, and I, you know, the conviction was so strong. I mean... I, you know, the draw, like I said, it was just drawing me. And I can remember looking back, you know, I was reading my Bible at the time. And at some point I, I read that scripture in Luke 7. It talks about um, the woman who fell at Jesus' feet and was, was weeping and wetting his feet with her tears and wiping. And I thought, that was me. You know, I, I was so broken. And, and uh, here was, I was finding Jesus. But yet I was so grateful that God was having pity on me, you know. And so, um, let me say, uh, like I said, I was still seeking. God put it in my heart to move to Oregon, where my sister lived, with her family. And that really was, you know, like I said, I was always trying to find a new start, but that really was a new start in my life. It's like I was leaving my old life behind. Um, I had to do something to get out of that environment. So I moved to Oregon to live with my sister. I lived there for a little over a year, and God really, really did start changing my life then. Um, I felt the Spirit of God just melting that hardness in my heart, touching just really, really deep places in my heart that I didn't even know existed. You know, that hardness that comes when you live out in the world just was, was melting off of me. 
and um, I was reading my Bible. I was going to church with her and her family. I was baptized, and that was just, you know, the most exciting day of my life. You know, I just remember crying and crying. It's like I felt new and clean inside, you know. And truth was getting in my heart. I was reading my Bible all the time. It was like I'd found life again, you know, or life because I'd never had it before. You know, I'd never felt these emotions before. So I lived with her for about a year. I eventually uh, moved back to Northern California where I was from. Um, I was still kind of seeking what I was supposed to do with my life, to go to college or, or whatever. Um, but I was still so hungry. I wanted, I still wanted so much more of God. I found a small local church. Um, but, you know, as I, as I started to go to church, I was with the people around me, and, and really they were just like I was. There was no real godly example to look for. And I still had all that. Because of all the sin I'd given to, I had so much torment in my mind and in my heart. You know, I didn't know how to, you know, God had done a work of repentance in my heart. But when you give yourself over to, to really demons like I had, I was full full to the brim you know I did not know how to get free from all that all that stuff my mind I could not I could not concentrate a lot um, and no one knew how to help me um, like I said I was going to as a charismatic church um, but it, it kind of had that California atmosphere it was very laid back um, there was a lot of um, talk about deliverance but yet nobody got delivered there was a lot of prophesying over people but it never came true and I just started looking around questioning what why is what I read in the Bible not happening here I, you know I read about in the book of Acts where people were set free from demonic powers and, and all that and I and I knew that's what I needed but yet I didn't see it happening around me so um, I had heard about a Bible school in Texas and um, I just I just I knew I needed more so, and I didn't know what to do. I'd heard about this place, and I knew that this was a place where people, as far as I knew, were the most sold out to God. And so I, I went there. I went to the training school there. I was there three months. Um, but again, around me, the lifestyles of the people were, were just worldly. You know, there was sexual sin everywhere. There was It was just just not a godly environment. So, but on, on the other hand, there were classes that we took, and, and God did do a work in my heart there because I had a cry in my heart. I remember one class in particular, it was on humility, and we were supposed to get up in front of the class and, and share our heart where God was dealing with us and, and opening up our heart to, to sins of our past, and, and it was very hard for me, but I had, I had a fear in my heart that I, I had to obey God, and that's what God was having me do, and I, and I did it, and I... And I can remember just feeling so free afterwards. They said even my, my countenance changed, you know, because light came in. You know, when you open up your heart and the, the darkness goes out, you know, the light can come in. So anyway, I spent uh, three months there. I came back here, you know, I came back to California and um, slipped back into my old patterns, went back. I was always back and forth and back and forth. But I can remember one night in Texas and standing in the kitchen of my dorm and just did, going about my business, what I was doing. And I remember I heard an audible voice said, you've got to fight, Allison. And it was like, you know, look behind you, who was in the room with you. But I knew it was God speaking to me. I didn't understand what he meant at the time. I didn't understand now, but at the time, you know, it was, it was very clear. So after that, I prayed about whether I was to stay on staff there, and I knew I, was, I wasn't supposed to stay. So I came back home. I went back to my old church still crying out to God, God, what is the answer? What's the key? Why, where is, you know, where is freedom from sin? And so I came back to um, the church that I had been going to, and when I, excuse me one second, my mouth's kind of dry. I hope I'm not talking too fast, but I'm trying to get it all in because there was a lot. Um, I met a young lady there. Her name is Suzanne. It was Suzanne Murray at the time. Uh, Suzanne Doyle now, and she was actually on the program several months back. But um, she was going to that church then because her dad was um, opening a bookstore. So she just happened to be there. And that just shows you how God, you know, if there's a cry in your heart, God will get you where he wants you to be to, to, for your will, his will in your life. So um, I remember just seeing her and thinking, I would like to be her friend. And that was kind of unusual for me because I was still pretty shy, you know. So... We became very close friends, and we actually ended up being roommates. And we had another friend; his name was Chris, and um, 
we just would spend time together and talk about talk about God and how much you know talk about the Bible and how we wanted God to to change our hearts and um, Suzanne's mom had actually been coming here to the Word of Faith uh, for seminars and she actually knew your family so um, she came here and she came to a seminar in the spring of 93 and she came back and I remember um, there was something different about her when she came back there was like a seriousness on her and I started asking her, I asked her questions, and I kept asking her questions, and she would tell me, and she'd say, you know, the, the people there, they, they really live what they believe, and um, the prayer there is, is very powerful, and there's deliverance, and I just kept asking her, you know, questions, just more questions, and we'd talk, and, and she'd share with me, and so, you know, really by that time, I was so desperate, and so hungry for God still, and so desperate to be free from sin that, um, um, the three of us, me, Chris, and actually her mom, the four of us, came to a seminar in May of um, May of '93. So um, I can remember um, that first that first Sunday that I walked into the church. It was a Sunday morning, and at that time, um, they they prayed before before service started. And I can just remember walking in the doors of the, of the church the first time. I'd never been there before. I'd never heard the prayer before, but it was so powerful. I mean, it's just, I, the only way I can describe it is, in the Bible where it talks about um, when Mary saw Elizabeth and, and baby John, you know, was in her womb and he just leapt with joy. And that's what happened on the inside of me. It's like my spirit just leapt with joy. You know, it's like I had found what I had been searching for all those years, you know, and I, I mean, that was it for me. Nobody had to explain it to me. Nobody had to, there was no question in my mind, this was God. Okay. So that seminar, I mean, it was, it was, the whole seminar was on um, harlotry in the church, sin in the church, and walking free from it, and, you know, how God wants us to live godly and holy, and that's how, that's what I had been searching for, and that seminar really just, it just brought deliverance to me. It changed my life forever, and that you know, I talked about that oppression that I had grown up in. Like I said, I received prayer. Um, it's like it just—it was like a heavy wool blanket, if I could describe it like that, on me all my all my life. And it just—it broke. It lifted off of me, and it's never come back. That's I mean, great. that changed that seminar. So um, we went back to California, back to our church. But you know, I knew I could not go back. It's like our eyes had been opened to to what we had been living in and what how God wanted us to live and we couldn't go back so we were praying you know God what what do we do yeah. so I can't say I heard an audible voice like I did you know prior to that but you know I kept crying out kept praying God you know what do you want me to do so God gave me this scripture in Jeremiah where it says I will take you individually one from a city and two from a family and I'll bring you to Zion and I will give you spiritual shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding and that God put that scripture in my heart you know to to speak to me that this was his will for my life so in August of 93 it's the middle of the summer we packed up our cars and we made the trip out here this we is drove you and Suzanne you, you and mentioned Chris. and Chris his okay. name was Chris Parks yeah um so like I said I had a 79 Datsun 210 and <laughs> He had like some other kind of, like a Pinto or something. I don't remember what it was. So there we are, you know, and, and gonna make this long trek across the country. It's August of 93. I knew I had quit my job, so I was canceling my dental insurance. I quickly had all four wisdom teeth out because I wasn't gonna have any dental insurance after that. So I was not feeling very well. So we're making this trip and, and we're in California. All our earthly belongings that we wanted to keep, really where there wasn't much, um, was in the back of our car. and. Uh, so we tried to get out of California, and you know what should have been a three-day trip took us five days because it took us three days just to get out of California. Um, the car, Chris's car broke down in in the desert somewhere, and um, I had to have a, a custom pitch, custom U-Haul hitch put on my car that wasn't made to tow a U-Haul. So here we are. We were quite a sight, you know, towing it. My car, like I said, it was not meant to carry that. It ran hot the whole trip, and Chris had to do most of the driving because with my teeth and all, I couldn't handle it. So it was quite an adventure, you know, I can imagine. So we got here, and really, I mean, it was the most, it was a, it was a hard trip, but it was the most exciting trip of my life. And really, once we, really, literally, once we crossed over the border from California into whatever state it was, I don't remember, um, 
you, we literally felt something lift off of us. It's like the devil didn't want to let us go, but That's he right. didn't have a choice. You know, <laughs> I mean, that was that fight that we had gotten in our hearts. You have to fight right. for the will of God for your life. And at, once we got out of club, it was smooth sailing after that. I mean, we had some bumps in the road, but it was it was really <laughs> fun. We had a good time. So anyway, that was in August of 93, and I've been here ever since. And um, I love my life here. Um, God has blessed me, you know, beyond beyond I could ever imagine. I have I have peace. I've never doubted that God brought me here. I never wanted to leave, you know. So, um, and then going back to that scripture about in Jeremiah 3, where God will give you spiritual shepherds, that's truly what he did for me. I mean, Sam and Jane, they're like my parents. I love them, you know, so much. And they are true pastors. You know, they love us. They, they care for us. Every detail of our lives, they care about. And the other ministers, you know, they've, they've taught me how to be strong in God, how to fight for the will of God for my life, how to live godly. You know, they, they, they give you truth. You know, never afraid to, you know, back in California, nobody would give you the truth about yourself. That, that you really, the reason you have all these problems is because you're rebellious. You know, I, I, I had fought against the call of God in my life. And that's why all these things, had, the judgment of God was on me from the time I was nine years old until now. You know, so um, anyway, while I was here, I learned, you know, how to have a relationship with Jesus, how to submit my heart and hear the voice of God and just settle down. That torment started breaking off my mind. Um, God blessed me with a wonderful husband. Um, he shared here, like you said, several several months back, and, and God had delivered him from drugs and heroin. And the, really, we are miracles, and we, we became close friends um, before we were married. And, and the miracle of it is, you know, we were married in the holiness of God, which is an absolute miracle, what we had come out of, you know. And... Um, God's given me priceless friends, you know, that I, I, nowhere in the world would you find the friends that I have now. Um, we really help each other. We, we, we help each other walk with Jesus, um, help each other to, to keep, you know, getting free from the sins of our past. And, and I like to say that Andy and I, you know, we were older because of everything that had happened. We were late bloomers, but yet, you know, even, even so, God, God blessed us with a, a daughter. Her name is Paige. Hi, Paige. She's 12 years old, and uh, she's just the biggest blessing in her life. And, you know, when I look at her, I just see the mercy of God on our lives and on her life. Now, her life's a miracle, too. She's got her own story. But um, anyway, God has just so blessed me. And I, I would like to just say, you know, the, the, the fight that you have to have if you want the will of God for your life. And um, because the devil, you know, the devil's defeated, but you have to remind him. He's right. defeated, you know, because he, it, you know, the Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what he tried to do in my life, but he couldn't because there was a cry in my heart. Yeah. You know, if you keep that cry in your heart. It doesn't matter where you are or what you've done. Um, God can find you. You know, my, my favorite psalm is Psalm 139 where it says, even the darkness hides nothing from you. And, and you know, God found me even in the darkness. You know, God had his hand on me and God saw me. And, um... Anyway, I'll just finish up, but, you know, I shared this verse in my, in my wedding, but um, the last verse at the end of the book of John says, if everything that Jesus did was written in a book, um, even the whole world could not contain all the books that were written, you know, all, all the things that he had done. So, and that's what really where, what God's done in my life. I could be here all day and just tell you what, I'm so grateful for Amen. God's done. That's so powerful, Allison. It's amazing you got that all in, in just know, right. 25 minutes. But it's, God did so much in your life, and uh, you're an absolute miracle. I and I just, I, I, I'm amazed at how you had this drawing power of God mm -hmm. on your life in the yeah, midst of strong. going to the bars. You were in that mm -hmm. relationship with somebody who was 17 years older than you at 19 Terrible. and going down all of these paths, but yet you had this, you know, it's amazing when God draws us, isn't That's it? Right. It's like this, it's like this enormous pressure and power it of God is, drawing us even though we're over here and we're doing this or that God's yes. drawing us and God yes. was drawing you yes. what's amazing is that God saw where you needed to be mm -hmm. all the way back in California and That's he right. here it is he made this way he had you meet Suzanne and I've right. known Suzanne for years Suzanne and I grew up together she was on right. this radio program and uh, as a matter of fact Suzanne and I were very close and mm -hmm. her mom and so it's amazing how God knew where you needed to That's be right. you searched and searched and searched and That's prayed right. and here it is god brought you here like you said to 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 shepherds uh that have a heart after god right. and and i knew that was my heart too just like you and i grew mm -hmm. up in southern california right. 
And, uh, you know, you remind me of my life because we both had a cry, God, bring us to, to shepherds that have a heart mm-hmm. after you so that we can know you. And that's what he did. And, our, of course, right. I just... I. I feel the same way about our pastors, Sam and Jane. That's exactly mm-hmm. who they are. They have a heart after God, right. and they're true shepherds, and, and they've helped so many of us. So that was so powerful. Thank okay. you so much for sharing Thank that. You. And we are so glad that you have listened today to our radio program. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 830 to 9. We hope that you'll continue to listen to us. Thank you.